أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فما لكم في المنافقين فئتين والله اركسهم بما كسبوا اتريدون ان تهدوا من اضل الله ومن يضل الله فلن تجد له سبيلا ودوا لو تكفرون كما كفروا فتكونون سواء فلا تتخذوا منهم اولياء حتى يهاجروا في سبيل الله فان تولوا فخذوهم واقتلوهم حيث وجدتموهم ولا تتخذوا منهم وليا ولا نصيرا صدق الله العظيم as i told you before three subjects were very important regarding the conduct of the munafiqeen number 1 the total obedience to muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam fala wa rabbika la yu'minuna hatta yuhakkimuka fi ma shajara bainahum thumma la yajidu min arfi anfusihim harajan mimma qadayta wa yusallimu taslima total obedience number 2 qital fi sabilillah because there was risk for life and loss of wealth also because you know everybody who went for fighting in the way of allah he had his own conveyance and his own rations it was not an organized army like we have today the supply lines are there and so on and all the conveyances you know the belongs to the government nothing of the sort so it was risk for life risk for money and wealth also and belongings also and the third subject now begins and that is of hijra As I told you, Hijra, immigration to Medina for all Muslims was declared to be necessary, obligatory. Why? The wisdom behind, because after Hijra, the revolutionary struggle of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam had entered its fifth phase. What is the fifth phase? Number one, Dawa. Number two, organization. Number three, training. Number four, passive resistance, no retaliation, taking all persecution without any retaliation. And now it was to be the fifth stage, and that is of active resistance, challenging the system, challenging the Quraysh because they were the Aymat al-Kufr, as they are called in Surah Al-Tawbah. They were Aymat al-Kufr. So now, for that purpose, it was necessary and, and absolutely logical that all the force available. should gather at one point so that that base you know is strong enough and from that base an offensive can be launched hence it was made compulsory every momin wherever he is whether he is at makka or at any other place in the whole of the arabian peninsula because the arabian peninsula had a few cities only just as makka and taif and madina and if you go all the rest it was bedouins arab areas were divided between qabail between the between the different tribes and they were wandering over there you know if there is some rain and there is some greenery here they are staying here today again because it is all finished then they moved to some other place wherever he they were they were forced and they were obliged to come to madina now this again became a very big testing for the for those people regarding their iman to leaving their homes and hearts while there was nothing for there which was disturbing them at makkah muslims were being persecuted but there were most bombings in different tribes and there is there was no conflict and they were not persecuting them now without any persecution to leave the homes and hearts it is not an easy job and the land you know which is very beloved to every person where he has lived 
where he was born, where his ancestors are, and buried. So this is again a very tough point. And it was said already, because in the end of Surah Al-Anfal, because Surah Al-Anfal was revealed much before this Surah, Surah Al-Anfal was revealed in the second year after Hijrah, just after the Battle of Badr. And the period of the revelation of Surah Al-Nisa is starting from the fourth year after Hijrah till the sixth year. Different passages were revealed at different times during these three years. So in Surah Al-Anfal we find the divine wordings. مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ وَلَايَتِهِمْ مِنْ شَيْنْ حَتَّى يُحَادِرُ If these moments, if they don't migrate, they don't make hijrah, they don't leave their homes and hearts and come over to Medina, then you have no relationship with them. Oh, moments. Now, this was a very harsh and very tough, you know, commandment. Now, there were people who had come to Medina from Quraysh, and there were their brethren, and they knew he has also embraced Islam. Only he is not making hijrah. But now Quran says, in min You have no connection with them now. No relationship. All relations broken. So this, this is the problem. And this was the problem faced not by the, by the munafiqeen of Medina, but the munafiqeen elsewhere. Because munafiqeen of Medina had to stay in Medina. This test, you know, they, they didn't have to pass through. So actually that was for the, the, a very big test for other people. For other people who embraced Islam, who accept the faith, but they didn't immigrate to Medina. And about them, you know, the Muslims were now differing. But what, what has happened? If he is, has not been able to immigrate even, then he is a Muslim. He has embraced Islam. He, he says Shahada. He testifies, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Only if he has not migrated. Our relations are broken. Why? He is my brother also. He belongs to my same tribe. And he has accepted Islam. Now, Allah says, مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ وَلَايَةٍ مِنْ شَيْنَةَ يُحَاجِرُ So there was a difference of opinion among Muslims. And with this, you know, this passage is now beginning. فَمَا لَكُمْ فِي الْمُنَافِقِينَ فِيَتَيْنِ What is with you? What has happened to you, O Muslims? You have become two parties regarding these munafiqeen. Those munafiqeen who have not made hijrah, who had preferred their ancestral places and homes to hijrah. مَا لَكُمْ فِي الْمُنَافِقِينَ فِيَتَيْنِ وَاللَّهُ أَرْكَسَهُمْ بِمَا كَسَبُوا Allah has sent them back, overturned them, reverted them. After iman they have gone back to kufr. Why? Because they have not, they have not complied with the divine ordinance. That you have to immigrate to Medina, the Kasabu, due to their own deeds. Aturiduna antahdu man adallallah. Very beautiful way. Do you want to lead and guide to the right path the one whom Allah has already declared as having gone astray? Allah declares, if they have not migrated, if they have not left their homes and hearts and, and families, and they have preferred remaining over there and not coming over to Medina. Actually, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already declared them that they have gone back. Now you want to, to guide them? وَمَنْ يُضْلِ لِلَّهِ فَلَنْ تَجَلَ لَهُ سَبِيلَ Whomsoever Allah has declared as have gone astray, you won't find for him any way of coming back and coming to the truth and coming to the true path. وَدُّوا لَوْ تَكْفُرُونَ كَمَا كَفَرُوا they want that you should also be become disbelievers like them. They might be saying, oh, you also come back to Makkah. Only we believe in Quran, we believe in Muhammad, we, we are praying, we are saying something. Why is it necessary that we go and leave our homes and go to Medina? You read, They want that you should also become the same. And you should also take to the same path. Kama kafaru fatakununa sawa. So that you become at par with them. فَلَا تَتَّخِذُوا مِنْهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءَ Don't make friends with them. حَتَّى يُحَاجِرُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Until they make hijrah. They migrate to Medina in the way of Allah. This is فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ As I told you, for jihad فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ It is necessary that all the available sources and resources, whether men or 
or material, they should be gathered at one base. Now it is essential. So they had to come, and they have to come, if they are true moments. فَلَا تَتَّخِذُوا مِنُمْ أَوْلِيَا حَتَّى يُحَاجِرُوا فِي سَبِلِ اللَّهِ Don't take, make them friends. Don't take, take them as friends. Until they immigrate in the way of Allah. فَإِنْ تَبَلَّوْا And if they turn their backs, فَخُذُوهُمْ وَقْتُلُوهُمْ Seize them, kill them, slay them. هَيْسُ وَجَدْتُبُوهُمْ Wherever you find them. وَلَا تَتَّخِذُوا مِنُمْ وَلِيَمْ وَلَا نَصِيرًا And don't make them your protectors or your helpers. Now what's the background of this ayah? Because we have to understand the background. Because Arabian society was basically tribal. Now a tribe as a whole is kafir. There are a few Muslims there. They have embraced Islam, accepted the faith, but they have not migrated. They are with the Kabila. When there is an expedition against that Kafir Kabila, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has sent an army against that Kabila, that Kafir, that Kafir Kabila, that unbeliever tribe. Now these people are also with the with, with those Kafirs. So they cannot plead that because we are Muslims, don't attack us. No. Because you didn't migrate, you remained with your Kafir Kabila, you will also take have the same fate as this Kuffar. So don't spare them. Because they, if they have not migrated, they are with their tribes. Al Maro Ma Man And this is the rule. A man will be counted with those whom he loves. He loves his tribe, not Islam, not Muhammad. Actually, then what does it mean? He will meet the same fate as the other people of his tribe. فَخُذُوهُمْ وَقْتُلُوهُمْ حَيْسُ وَجَدْتُبُوهُمْ Wherever you find. وَلَا تَتَّخِذُ مِنْهُمْ وَلِيَمْ وَلَا نَصِيرًا إِلَّا الَّذِينَ يَسِلُونَ إِلَىٰ قَوْمٍ بَيْنَكُمْ وَبَيْنَهُمْ مِسَاقٍ But there is one exception. Except those who have joined, who have friendship and treaties, with that Qabila, with that nation, between you and them, there is a treaty. If that Qabila or those people have a treaty with a, with a, with a uh, tribe with whom you have a treaty, then you know they are also covered by the terms of that treaty. Or Jawukum, and number two, or the, uh, the other ex exception is, if they come to you, Hasirat Suduruhum, their chests shrink. Ayyukatilukum, they don't want to fight you also. And they don't want to fight their own tribe, their own nation also. They want to be non-aligned. They want to be... So they are not fighting you, against you, along with that tribe. Although they are not fighting with you against their own tribe. But if they want to they remain neutral, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made them also an exception. Don't kill them. وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ لَسَلَّتَهُمْ عَلَيْكُمْ If Allah had so wished, He would have given them power over you. فَقَاتَلُوا فَلَقَاتَلُوكُمْ And they would have fought you, side by side with their own tribe. They might have fought against you, O Muslims. فَإِنِ اَتَزَلَوْكُمْ So if they are withdrawing from you, فَلَمْ يُقَاتِلُوكُمْ And they are not fighting against you. وَأَلْقَوْا إِلَيْكُمُ السَّلَمَةً And they are presenting to you the peace. فَمَا جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ عَلَيْهِمْ سَبِيلًا For such persons Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you no way, assigns no, no, no way against them. Now you can't have any step against them because they belong to a tribe with whom you have a treaty. Number two, or because they have come to you and they declare that they will neither take the side of their tribe nor they will take the side with you. Neither fight you against you with their tribe nor they are ready to fight against their tribes along with you. So now spare them. This is the second exception. But here is again another exception to this exception. What is that? Satajaduna akhareen. You will find in, in another group also. Yuriduna an yamanukum wa yamanukumahum. They want to be in peace from you also and from their own tribe also. They want peace. They don't want to fight. They don't want to take sides. They declare that we are neutral. In the same way as in the previous ayah. But, 
whenever there is some temptation, when they see that our tribe is strong and this tribe is sure to win against the army sent by Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, then they take the side of their their tribe so that they can also gain from the victory. They can they can also gain from the the booty. Whenever there is a testing and temptation, then they go back on their on their promise. Now, if they are not withdrawing from you, if they are not sparing you, and they are not presenting peace to you, and they are not holding back their hands from you, now you seize them, and kill them, wherever you find them, and against such people, we have given you a clear mandate, you can go against them. So these things couldn't be understood unless you know, you know, the struggle going on between Islam and Kufr. Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his companions on one side, and his Kufar on the other. But there was some intermingling, because in that tribe, Mainly the tribe is kafir, but a few Muslims are there. So there is a complication. So these problems had to be solved for the Muslims. What to do? Well, that person is a Muslim, but he is, along with his tribe, he is fighting us. Should I spare him? No, don't spare him. Kill him. If he has come to the fight against you, along with the, uh, with the tribe to which he belongs. So these things are to be given in detail, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made everything clear. وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنِنَ يَقْتُلَ مُؤْمِنًا إِلَّا خَطَى And it is not becoming, not appropriate for a mu'min to kill a mu'min. Mu'min will never kill a mu'min. إِلَّا خَطَى Except by mistake. He was aiming at something else, but you know the bullet, it went to some Muslim and mu'min, you know, and he was killed. And in the same way, you know, in accidents, you don't want to kill a person, but if some person is, you know, crashed under, under the wheels of your car. So all these things are, this qatl khata it is called. Murder by mistake. وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنِنْ أَنْ يَقْتُلَ مُؤْمِنًا إِلَّا خَطَى A mu'min, it is not, it, beho, it behoves not a mu'min that he may kill a mu'min. إِلَّا khata Except by mistake. Now what happens if you have killed by mistake a mu'min? Now there are three conditions. وَمَنْ قَتَلَ مُؤْمِنًا خَطَعًا Whosoever kills a mu'min, a real true Muslim, by mistake, فَتَحْرِيرُ رَقَبَةٍ مُؤْمِنًا Now he has to set free a mu'min slave, number one. This is the fine which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has levied on him. He had to, if he has a slave, Muslim slave, he will have to set him free. If he doesn't have, he will have to purchase one and set him free. Tahrir or Rakabatim Mumina, number one. But Diyatun Musallamatun al Ali. And the blood money will have to be paid to the, to, the, to the family of the person who was killed. So, two things. You have killed a person by mistake. You have to pay the blood money to the family of the person, number one. And in addition, this is actually the compensation that you are giving to the family because they have lost a member. But you know, because this is a sin. Although you, were, you didn't aim at it, but it has happened at your hands. So you have to set free a mu'min from the bondage of slavery. Illa an yasaddaqu. Except if the family people, they forego that money as arm and charity. No, no, we don't require. Because you didn't kill willfully. You didn't want to kill our person, to murder our person. It was a mistake. We, you know, absolve you of that responsibility. We don't ac accept this, this blood money. And we give it to you back as a charity. This is one form. And if that person belongs to a tribe which is your enemy, he is him Muslim. He was a Mormon. You have killed him by mistake. But he belonged to a tribe which is in enmity against Muslims. Now what to do? Will you pay the blood money? No. Now one thing is gone. Because the family is kafir. You are not going to pay to them the blood money. But 
Only setting free of a Mormon slave will suffice. No payment of the blood money because he belonged to a tribe which is kafir. Now the third condition. If he belonged to a tribe between whom and you there is a treaty, he will be treated as a Mormon as the first case. You have to pay the blood money to his family because although it is kafir, but you had a misak with them. Although they are unbelievers. The tribe is unbelievers, but you had a treaty with them. So you have to pay the blood money to the family of the deceased and also you have to set free a Mormon slave. But whosoever cannot afford it, what to do? Now this is kafara. What to do? I don't have money to purchase a, a, a slave and then set him free. He will have to keep fasting for two continuous months. Sixty days continuous. Tawbatam min Allah. This is a tawbah prescribed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, although he didn't intend to kill him, but because, you know, human life is so precious. Now, what is the wisdom behind it? Because of this law, now you will be extra careful. If this law is there, you will be extra careful that you don't kill a Muslim or a Mormon, even by mistake. But if this law is not there, you may be more carefree to make you more careful that this is the condition, this is the, these are the hudud, these are the tazirat. Tawbatam min Allah wa kaan Allahu aliman hakima and Allah Sala knows everything. He is ever knowing, all wise. Wa man yaktal mu'minan mutaammidan. Now, willful killing or slaying of a mu'min. Whosoever kills a mu'min willfully, fa jazaahu jahannam khalidan fiha. His reward, his recompense is the hell in which he will abide forever. This is the importance, you know, and how, you know, trivial matter today the Muslims think is killing Muslims, killing Muslims. When Allah says, وَمَنْ يَقْتُ الْمُؤْمِنًا مُتَعَمِّدًا فَجَزَاهُ جَهَنَّمْ خَالِدًا فِيهَا خُلُود forever. وَغَذَبَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ And Allah will have his wrath on him. He will have the wrath of Allah. وَلَعَنَهُ And Allah will curse him. وَعَدَّ لَهُ عَذَابًا عَظِيمًا And Allah has prepared for him a very big punishment and chastisement. Now this is the importance. As we read yes, last night, two things are fundamental for human society. Respect for the life, human life. And respect for property. If you know respect for life goes, the foundation of the so social order it crumbles. And if respect for each other's money, each other's wealth and belongings is not there, it will be all chaos. No contentment, no peace in the society. So these two things are very fundamental. Ya amanu iza fi Now another case. An army is going, Muslim army, against some tribe, some enemy. And in the way they find a person, he belongs to some other tribe. And he says, Assalamu alaikum. What does it mean? He has declared himself to be a Muslim. Now these people think that if we accept him as a Muslim, we can't kill him. They say, no, you are not Muslim. You are only saying, Assalamu alaikum, only to save your life. So that they can take whatever belongings he has. When he is killed, and also all his wealth will come to the Muslims. So now this condition, what to do? If there is a combat, you are fighting against a tribe, and a person who claims to be a Muslim is fighting along with his tribe against you, then you kill him. Even if he says, Assalamu alaikum, you have to kill him. But here it is an incident which is a stray incident. No, fighting, actual fighting is not taking place. You have not, you know, attacked any tribe. 
the actual fighting is not taking place. You are only going somewhere and you find someone. And he says, Assalamu alaikum, I am also Muslim. And you say, no, last time Ya ayyuhalladzeen amanu iza zarabtum fil ard. Fi sabirillah. Oh, you who believe, when you are going, traveling in the way of Allah, fatabayyanu. Always investigate. Wala taqulu liman alqa ilaykum as-salam alafta mu'mina. And don't say to anybody who, who greets you with salam, who bestows on you salam, as-salamu alaykum. Who presents himself to be Muslim, last of all, you are not a Muslim. You can say it. Tab tahun arab al hayat al dunya. You are covetous of the worldly gains. You want to have the the wealth that he has, anything, maybe even arms, his sword, his something else. So that was also very precious in those days. Tab tahun arab al hayat al dunya. You want to have the goods of the life of the world. Find Allah Maghalimu Kasira. Don't do this. Have faith in Allah. Allah has in store for you very big boot, booties and you know ghalaim. Allah will give you. But don't behave this way. Kazalika kuntum min qabl. This was your condition before. Before Iman, you were after worldly things. All, all that mattered to you was this world, this worldly life, this worldly comforts, this worldly possessions. But now you have come to believe in the hereafter. So don't behave as you were behaving before. Zalika kuntum min qabul. Allahu alaykum. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you grace. And He has shown His grace to you, bestowed upon you His favors. So now you must investigate. You must investigate whether he is a real Muslim or not. Inna Allah kana bima ta'amaluna khabira. Verily, whatever you are doing, Allah is ever aware of it. La yastari al-qa'iduna min al-mu'minina ghayra huli al-dharari wal mujahiduna fi sabili Allahi bi amwalihim wa anfusihim. Now as I told you that going to war was not made obligatory for every Muslim. There was only persuasion. If you want martyrdom, you want paradise, you want to have the higher grades in, in Jannah, well, go and fight for the cause of Allah. Lay down your life. It was persuasion. Obligatory was only in the last battle of Tabuk. Therefore, whenever there was any battle, and if Muslims any Muslim which not, didn't join the Muslim army, there was no explanation was called. Why didn't you go? Because it was not obligatory. It was all voluntary. The persuasion was there. Now that persuasion is coming in a form, comparing people who are able-bodied, but they are sitting back in their homes and not going to fight for the cause of Allah. And people who are going out to fight for the cause of Allah, to make the deen of Allah supreme, and they are making jihad and qital fi sabilillah with their lives and their belongings. Are they equal? No. La yastari al-qa'iduna. They are not equal. Who are not equal? Al-qa'iduna min al-mu'minina ghaira ulil zarar. Those who sit back and are not disabled. If somebody is disabled, if he is lame, if some limb is cut off, he can't go. So that is something else. But a person who is able-bodied and he who has all the means and still he doesn't go and join the qital fi sabilillah, this person is not equal to those wal mujahidun fi sabilillah bi amwalihim wa anfusihim who are going to jihad in the way of Allah with their own lives, risking their lives and their belongings. فَضَّلَ اللَّهُ الْمُجَاهِدِينَ بِ amwalihim wa anfusihim ala al-qaidina daraja Allah has given a very big higher level for those. He has reserved a very big high level for those who make jihad for the cause of Allah with their belongings and their lives. But for all, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised good things because it is not obligatory. Therefore, if somebody is not going to, to the war, to, to, to the battlefield, to fight for the cause of Allah, because it is not obligatory, Allah will not deprive him from 
paradise from his reward. But when it becomes obligatory, if you don't go, then you are depriving yourself from the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because it was still voluntary. It was optional. You can go if you like. If you want a higher level in Jannah, go. If you don't want, well, you can sit back. No explanation will be called from you. No blaming will come on you. وَكُلَّ وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الْحُسْنَى وَفَضَّلَ اللَّهُ الْمُجَاهِدِينَ عَلَى الْقَاعِدِينَ عَجْرًا عَظِيمًا Again a persuasion. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give much greater rewards to those who are fighting for the cause of Allah, who are making jihad in the way of Allah, as compared to those who have, who are sitting back. دَرَجَاتٍ مِّنْهُ Again to emphasize. These will be the degrees raised high by him. It is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَغْفِرَةً And then there will be also forgiveness of their sins. Rahma, And again, more of mercy. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is غَفُور, forgiving, Rahim, and he is merciful. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ تَوَفَّعُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ ظَالِمِي أَنفُسِهِمْ Now again those people who although they have embraced Islam, they have not made hijrah. They are living with their kafir tribes, whether at Mecca or elsewhere. They have not come over to Medina. Now, if death comes to them, the angel would ask, Where were you? You professed Islam? You are living with the kafir tribe? Why didn't you make hijrah? You are doing wrong to your own self. You are making yourself doomed. Verily those whom the angels are putting to death. Zalimi and Fusim, and they are wronging their selves by not migrating, by not having migrated. And the angel would say, in what condition were you? How come? You are a moment and you are living in this place, which is which belongs to Kufar, and you didn't migrate. قَالُوا كُنَّا مُسْتَلَعْفِينَ فِي الْأَرْضِ They will reply to these angels, we were oppressed people. We were weak. مُسْتَلَعْفِينَ قَالُوا أَلَمْ تَكُنْ أَرْضُ اللَّهِ وَاسِعَةً The angels would reply, the reply was not the earth of Allah. The Allah's earth was not wide enough for you, for to hajaru fiha, that you could make any migration and hijrah therein. Allah's world was very wide, very spacious, very commodious. You could have gone elsewhere. You should have left your kafir family and tribe and gone over to Muslim city or Muslim, you know, the days of hijrah. أَلَمْ تَكُنْ أَرْضُ اللَّهِ وَاسِعَةً فَتُحَاجِرُ فِيهَا فَأُولَائِكَ مَا بَاهُمْ جَهَنَّمْ وَسَاتْ مَسِيرًا For such people, their abode is hell. And it is a very bad destination. May Allah save us all from that. Illa al Again an exception here also. Except those who were really weak and oppressed. Min rijal Whether they were men. Wal nisa. Or women. Wal wildan. Or children. La yastatiyuna hilatan. Who didn't afford. They didn't have any means to immigrate. After all, wala yahtaduna sabila. They didn't know the path. How can I go to Medina when I don't know the path? It's not like you know buying a ticket from you know airways and going over to another country. Going from Makkah to Medina, or from any other far place, going from there, if there is no means, there is no camel, there is no no conveyance, there is no you know wealth with them to meet the expenses during the journey. Or they don't even know the path, the way. So if there are such, you know, restrictions on them, if they are really not able to do it, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, إِلَّا الْمُسْتَضَفِينَ مِنَ الرِّجَالِ وَالْمِسَائِ وَالْبِلْدَانِ لَا يَسْتَطِيُونَ حِيلَةً وَلَا يَحْتَدُونَ سَبِيلًا فَأُولَائِكَ عَصَ اللَّهُ وَنْ يَعْفُوا عَنْهُمْ عَصَ اللَّهُ وَنْ يَعْفُوا عَنْهُمْ As for these people, it can be hoped that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will pardon them. But it can be hoped only. Allah is not guaranteed. Because Allah will judge on the day of judgment whether there was 
of really excused or excusable or not. Whether their excuse was a lame excuse or a real excuse, it will be judged. To asallahu an yatu yafu anhum, there is a possibility they can hope to be pardoned. Wa kana Allahu afu an ghafura, and Allah is all pardoning and forgiving. Wa man yuhadir fi sabir Allah, and whosoever immigrates in the way of Allah, fi sabir Allah. What does it mean? Fi sabir Allah is always for jihad. Fi sabir Allah. In fact, fi sabir Allah. You have to spend your money for making the deen of Allah supreme. For the expenses for jihad. Qital fi sabirillah, jihad fi sabirillah, infaq fi sabirillah, hijrah fi sabirillah. What does it mean? Because it is the duty of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to make the deen of Allah supreme. And he is waging jihad. And for that purpose, now he wants, and Allah wants, that all the human resources should be gathered together at one place. So that an effective offensive, you know, that can be launched. So this is hijrah fi sabirillah. This is not hijrah fi sabirillah wealth. Fi sabirillah of good living. Hijrah. Fi sabirillah mal. No, fi sabirillah. Hijrah. To leave your ancestral place only for the purpose of the making of the deen of Allah supreme. That is hijrah fi sabirillah. وَمَنْ يُحَادِرْ فِي سَبِرِ اللَّهِ يَجِدْ فِي الْأَرْضِ مُرَاغَمًا كَسِيرًا وَسَعَا He will find on the earth places of refuge and abundant resources. Don't think Allah's world, Allah's earth is not small. It's very wide. They will find. It's only the intention. If you determine, if you have the true determination, Allah will, will accommodate you. Will give you places of refuge. Safar hai shart, musafir nawaz bohtere. Hazar ha shajare saya dar rah me hai. The only condition is that you want to immigrate, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it easy for you. Fasanu yasiru lil yusra. Waman yakhruj min baitihi muhajiran. And whosoever has left his home, immigrating, going towards Madina. And death takes, overtakes him in the way. He intended to make hijrah. He left his home. He started from his ancestral place, Mecca or elsewhere. وَمَنْ يَخْرُجْ مِنْ بَيْتِهِ مُحَاجِرًا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ ثُمَّ يُدْرِكُ الْمَوْتُ But now, death overtakes him before he reaches Medina. What will be the end? فَقَدْ وَقَعَ عَجْرُهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ Now his reward is now due on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because in the Malamalu bin Niyat, if he couldn't reach Madina, it was now for, not, for, for no fault of his. Because that came, overtook him. But his ajr, his sawab, his reward is ensured. And here the wordings are, Waqa ajruhu Allah. Now it is due on Allah. He has to pay his rewards. Allah is taking upon himself that he will have to pay his reward. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُرُ الرَّحِيمَ And verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ever merciful, ever forgiving. وَإِذَا ضَرَبْتُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ فَلَيْسَ عَلَيْكُمْ جُنَاهُونَ أَنْ تَخْصُرُوا مِنَ الصَّلَاةِ إِنْ خِفْتُ مَنْ يَفْتِدَكُمُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِنَّ الْكَافِرِينَ كَانُوا لَكُمْ عَدَوْبًا مُبِينًا And when you that you shorten your prayer. This is Qasr. Two rakat of Zohar and Asr instead of four. Of Isha also, in the same way. So if you are traveling in the land, there is no blame upon you if you shorten your prayer. In khiftum an yaftinakumul lazina kafaru. Now there is another additional condition here in the Quran. If you fear, that those, your enemies, your the kuffar, they will afflict you, they will attack you. Conditions are emergency conditions. Inna al-kafirina kanu lakum adu wa mubina. Verily, these, these unbelievers, they are clear and open enemies for the moments. Now, this is the only ayah in the Quran where qasr fi salah is mentioned. But this ayah is putting another 
restriction, another limitation, another condition. Not a condition of peace, but if there is a fear, if there is a condition of emergency. But this is, this has been extended by the Prophet ﷺ. This is the mercy. This concession, the Prophet ﷺ extended. Sunnah can add something to Quran. Sunnah cannot abrogate Quran. But Sunnah can add something to Quran. Just as I told you, in the law of, in, in the law of Muharramat, Lil Nikah, you cannot have two sisters at once in marriage with you. But the Prophet said, the same will be the case of a woman and her maternal aunt or paternal aunt. They cannot be taken into marriage simultaneously. So that was an addition by the Prophet So this qasr in, in ordinary journeys, it is an addition from the sunnah of the Prophet Now this is salatul khawf. There is emergency, there is fear. That if we all stand in prayer, and because, you know, at that time, the prayer was to be led by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And if you have two prayers, two congregations as we are having, now the Prophet will be leading only one. And nobody, no among the Muslims at that time, would be ready to leave this congregation and wait for the second congregation, congregation which will not be led by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Now this is the problem. Otherwise it is easy. You can divide, you know. Half of the army, half of the contingent, they can pray and the other can stay behind, guarding. And then, you know, they can go and the, the rest, you know, they, they can come and pray. But no, it is the case, special case, when Muhammad is there, sallallahu alayhi wa So the wordings are, وَإِذَا كُنْتَ فِيهِمْ When you are among them, with them, فَاقَمْتَ لَهُمُ الصَّلَاةِ And you are now leading the prayer for them. فَلْتَقُمْ تَعِفَةٌ مِّنْهُمْ مَعْتُ So now one group of the Muslims should stand behind you, with you. وَلْيَاخُذُ وَسْلِحَتَهُمْ But they should take their arms with them. The arms should be ready, nearby. Not that they have to run after, you know, if, if there is some uh, attack, you know, surprise attack. And now running for the, for the arm. No, keep the arms with them. فَإِذَا سَجَدُوا When they have prayed, فَلْيَكُونُوا مِنْ وَرَائِكُمْ Now they should go in the rear, in the back. وَالْتَعْتَ تَعَيْفَةٌ أُخْرَى And the other group now should come. لَمْ يَسُلُّوا يُسَلُّوا Who have not yet prayed. فَلْيُسَلُّوا مَعْتْ Now they should pray with you. وَلْيَاخُذُوا حِذْرَهُ وَأَسْلِحَتَهُمْ And they should take now their precautions also, their shields also, and their arms also. Now what is the condition? Two rakat are to be offered. First rakat, the Prophet and the people, the first group, will sit together. Then Muhammad used to keep sitting. He is not standing for the second rakat. The second rakat, all the people are saying themselves, just as we join the congregation, if we are joined late, then we complete our salah. Now then, when they have completed that, they go. Now the other group comes. And now Muhammad Sallallahu stands up. And the second raka, these people are now praying behind him. And after that, you know, the, uh, Muhammad Sallallahu would say salam, and they will complete their prayer, another, uh, another raka. So that was the condition in which, you know, no, no, nobody was deprived of the imama of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. These kuffar, these your enemies, these unbelievers, they very much love it, like it, that you become unaware of your arms. You just forget them. And your baggage and luggage. And then they swoop upon you in, at once. Then they, you know, attack you in a surprise attack. But there is, there will be no blame upon you if there is, you know, some difficult conditions due to raining, or somebody is, you know, is is ill. Antadaw waslihatakum that you you set aside your your arms. Wa khuzu hidrakum, but you should have at least the shields with you, precaution. If somebody attacks, at least you can have, you can save yourself with the shield. 
ان اللہ عد علی کافرین عذاب مہینا ویری لی اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی ہیز پریپیئرڈ فار دی ان بلیورز اے ویری اے ویری چسٹسمنٹ وچ از ہیومیلیٹنگ فائزا قضیت مصلاح ناؤ وین یو ہیو سیڈ یور پریئر کمپلیٹڈ فسکر اللہ قیام و قعودا ناؤ ڈونٹ ٹیک ٹو دی ایٹیٹیوڈ نہ داؤ یور یو فرگٹ اللہ سلا از فار ذکر آف اللہ اٹ از اے ڈیفینٹ فارم آف ذکر آف اللہ عقیم سلاۃ علی ذکری بٹ آفٹر دس آلسو یو ہیو ٹو کنٹینیو ذکر آف اللہ یو مسٹ گو آن ریمبرنگ اللہ یو آر ناٹ گوئنگ ٹو فرگٹ اللہ فار اے مومنٹ ایون فیضا قدر تم سلا فسکر اللہ قیام و قعود و اللہ جنوب کم کیپ اللہ ان یور مائنڈ ریمبر ہم ویدر یو آر اسٹینڈنگ اور یو آر سیٹنگ اور یو آر ریکلائنگ بائی یور سائڈس فائزت مانن تم اینڈ وین یو فیل یو آر سیکیور دیر از پیس دیر از نو ڈینجر آف اینی اٹیک بائی دی اینمی فاقی مسلا ناؤ اسٹیبلش دی ریگولر پلیئر ناؤ دس سلاۃ الخوف دس ول ناٹ بی دیر ناؤ دس قصر ول ناٹ بی دیر ان دا سلاۃ اکانت المومنین کتاب موقوتا ویریلی دس سلاۃ ہیز بین پرسکرائبڈ on the moments according to the times appointed times wala tahinu fi ittiba'il qawm and don't feel weak don't be weak in ittiba'il qawm in your pursuing the hot pursuit of the enemy pursue them follow them wala tahinu fi ittiba'il qawm in takunu ta'lamun very beautiful sentence very beautiful ayah If you are hurt, you have to face difficulties because going to war, there are hurtings, there are injuries, you may be going without food, you may have to go without water, all the things. In Talamuna, Fainnahum Yalamuna Kama Talamun, your enemies also are, are bearing all the hardships and pains, aren't they? The 1,000 army came over to Badr from Mecca, more than 200 miles. Was it easy for them? They were striving for the cause of Tahut. You are striving for the cause of Allah. So you shouldn't complain of any discomforts, injuries, or losses to life and wealth and property. They are your enemies. They are also doing the same. Are they not sacrificing their lives? Didn't Abu Jahl sacrifice his life for the idols? For their wrong deen? So, oh Muslims, why do you show weakness? But now, who, are, who is being addressed here? Not Abu Bakr, not Umar. Who are being addressed? The Munafiqeen. You profess to be Muslims. You profess to be Mormons. You profess to be believing in Allah. You profess to be believing in hereafter. But tarjuna min Allah ma'ala yarjoon. You have expectation from Allah which they don't have. You have expect expectation that if you are martyred, you will go straight to paradise. They don't have any expectation. They don't believe in the hereafter. Still they are ready to sacrifice their lives. Just look to the Japanese. In the Second World War, they didn't believe in any paradise or any hereafter, but they were, you know, committing suicide, harakari. And they were directing the bomb, and they were themselves, you know, navigating the bomb, and then descending into the chimneys, you know, of the ships. And they knew it. When the bomb will explode, first of all, their pieces, you know, they will fly. Then some harm will come to the ship. And they were doing it for what? For their king, Hirohito, because he, they took them to be some, you know, Deota, some God. So what do you? You believe in Allah? You believe in hereafter? And you are seeing, showing reluctance from going to war for the cause of Allah? How beautiful. وَلَا تَحِنُوا فِي اتِّبْغَاءِ الْقَوْمِ إِن تَكُونُوا تَعْلَمُونَ فَإِنَّهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ كَبَا تَعْلَمُونَ Alam, Alam means pain. If you have to experience pain, they are also bearing pain, just as you are bearing pain. 
wa tarjuna min Allah ma la yarjun and you expect and hope from Allah what they don't expect wa kana Allahu aliman hakima and verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is alim and hakim all knowing all wise inna anzalna ilaykal kitaba bil haqq li tahkuma bayna an-nas bima arak Allah verily we have sent down this book o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam on you with the total truth some of the translators have translated with truth al haqq means total truth this is lamul hasn inna anzalna ilaykal kitaba bil haqq we have sent down on you this book with the total truth the tahkuma bayna an-nas bima arak Allah so that you should judge between people judge in their disputes in their matters give your judgment bima arak Allah with what Allah has shown you this ara al irat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent the book also and he has given him the intelligence also the hikmah also so you are you use not only the law but your intellect also bima arak Allah what Allah has shown you wala takun lil khayrina khasima and you should not be an advocate in favor of the treacherous ones these munafiqeen don't plead for them don't intercede for them wala takun lil khayrina khasima they are actually the treacherous ones they say something else they do something else they profess something else and they didn't don't, they don't really believe in it wastaghfirullah and you ask the pardon of allah also maybe behind this aya you know there might be a background that out of you know the marwa the gentleness of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam just as he he gave his shirt for the raisul munafiqin maybe he might have asked the forgiveness forgiveness of allah for some munafiq allah said you shouldn't do it fala takun lil khayrin khasima they are treacherous they these people they don't deserve your intercession and if you have done it fastaghfirullah now you yourself ask the forgiveness of allah fastaghfirullah inna allah kana ghafuran rahima Allah verily Allah is ghafur and rahim he is forgiving and he is merciful that is why we find you know later on in surah al munafiqun also in surah al tawbah also istaghfir lahum aw la tastaghfir lahum in tastaghfir lahum 70 maratan lay yaghfir Allah whether you ask Allah's permission for them or you don't ask even if you ask the forgiveness of allah for them 70 times allah is not going to forgive them this is in surah tawba istaghfir lahum aw la tastaghfir lahum in tastaghfir lahum 70 maratan lay yaghfir allah and in surah al munafiqin sawaun alayhim astaghfarta lahum am lam tastaghfir lahum lay yaghfir allah lahum equal for them whether you ask allah's forgiveness for them or not allah is not going to forgive them So the same is the ayah here. Wastafur Allah wa la tujadil an al-ladina yaktaroon al-fusoon. Don't plead on behalf of them who are behaving in treachery against their own selves. Yaktaroon al-fusoon. They are making themselves doomed. Don't be advocate for them. Don't plead in their favour. ولا تجادل عن الذين يقتالون انفسهم ان الله لا يحب من كان خوانا نسيما الله doesn't like those who are treacherous and who are sinful يستخفون من الناس ولا يستخفون من الله they want to hide their shortcomings their lies from the people but they don't want to hide themselves and they can't hide themselves from Allah Allah knows them through and through Allah sees them when they are playing something against the Muslims during the night. Allah is with them. Allah knows. Allah record. We have just read. Allahu yaktubu ma yubayyatun. Allah is recording whatever they are saying. 
What are the proceedings of those secret meetings? يَسْتَغْفُونَ مِنَ النَّاسِ وَلَا يَتَغْفُونَ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَهُوَ مَاهُمْ إِذْ يُبَيِّتُونَ مَا لَا يَرْضَى مِنَ الْقَالِ And Allah is with them when they are planning those unpleasant things, unwanted things, مَا لَا يَرْضَى Unpleasant things during the night. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ بِمَا يَعْمَلُونَ مُحِيطًا And Allah has encompassed, encircled whatever they are doing. They can't do anything beyond those limits. Now this is addressing to the Muslims, true Mu'mins. As I told you, a brother is a Muslim, true Muslim. Another brother is Munafi, but he is a brother. A natural love and affection is there. Allah says, You have been pleading for your brothers in this, the life of this world. فَمَّنْ يُجَادِ لِلَّهَ عَنْهُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Who will plead in their favor against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment? Will there be any pleader? Will there be anybody who will be able to intercede for them in their favor? هَا أَنْتُمْ هَا أُولَاءِ جَادَلْتُمْ عَنْهُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا You went to the Prophet, oh, oh, Ya Rasulullah, just forgive him, just ignore. Please, he is my brother. Or he is related to me. You have been advocating their cause. You have been pleading their cases. Who will be able to plead in their favor on the day of judgment, on the day of resurrection? Who will become a protector for them? فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ سُوءًا أَوْ يَزْلِمْ نَفْسَهُ سُمَّ يَسْتَغْفِرِ اللَّهِ جَرِيدِ اللَّهِ غَفُورَ الرَّحِيمًا But whosoever commits a mistake and he has wronged himself, committing a sin, sin you are doing wrong to your own self. So, but then, just as we read, you know, before, then he apologizes, he repents, he, rep he returns to Allah. سُمَّ يَسْتَغْفِرِ اللَّهِ then if he, if he really repents and asks the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ready to accept the repentance. He is tawwab, he is ghafoor, he is rahim. Now let me tell you the ayah which we have already read. Fastaghfirullah, O Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you should also beg the pardon of Allah. You should also ask the forgiveness of Allah. And there is a hadith, in the Sahih of Imam Bukhari from Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala an, according to which the Prophet said, إِنِّي لَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ وَأَتُوبُ إِلَيْهِ سَبْعِينَ مَرَّةً فِي كُلِّ يَوْمِ I ask the forgiveness of Allah and I repent before Him every day seventy times. But you know, the discrepancy or the shortcoming of the Prophet is something else or which he used to repent. Our sins and our shortcomings are something else. Don't, you know, guess one on the other. If there was some, some lessening of the intensity of love, intensity of love has decreased a bit. For Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, it was also a sin. He thought, "In the hula yuhanu ala qalbi, I find sometimes I feel there is a wheel on my heart. And when I feel that there is some wheel on my heart, which is in between me and Allah subhanahu wa taala, I repent and make tawbah towards." So that is a different case altogether. وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ سُوءًا أَوْ يَزْلِمْ نَفْسَهُ سُمَّ يَسْتَغْفِرِ اللَّهَ يَجِدِ اللَّهَ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا Whosoever commits some evil deed or he has wronged himself and then he apologizes to Allah, asks for his pardon, asks for his forgiveness, he will find Allah that he is غفور, he is forgiving, رحيم is merciful. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم. الله أكبر الله أكبر. 
The Islamic Organization of North America, Iona, is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. One, a Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, Iman, in one's heart. Two, a Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Three, a Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. Four, a Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing Iona is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about Iona, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at tanzeem.us or call our toll-free number 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together we can make a difference.